Good morning, this is Brother Daniel. I just was praying for you before I turned on the video. Just praying that God will help us as a church to grow through this tough time, to make sure that our hearts are focused on Him through it all. I'm sitting here on my couch at home, probably where you're at, I hope, that you're gathered with your family and perhaps you've got your Bible open on your lap, just like I do, and you're ready to study God's Word. I'm looking forward to it. It's pretty unusual. I think I've been doing this for a long time, 27 years now, and I've seen a lot of challenges and a lot of unusual things, some funny things, some scary things, but I don't think I've ever seen anything like this, but we're going to make the best of it. We're not going to change. Our commitment at Elk Ridge, my commitment as your pastor, hopefully your commitment as well, is to study God's Word. And so we want to do that without apologies and with a determination that nothing is going to keep us from being together and studying the Word of God and worshiping the Lord. So uh, before I begin the message this morning, I wanted just to give a special thanks to Landon Haston for all he's done to make the technology possible for us to put together our service for this morning online. I want to thank those who are involved in the children's ministry, Becky Gomez and Stacy McCabe, for putting together a packet for the children so that they could follow along and, and worship with us as well. And I want to thank all the pastoral staff and the elders who have been praying. It's a tough time, and everybody has been rallying to do whatever they can to make sure that we can shepherd you well and that we can stay connected and that we can remain a family. I said to the elders on Tuesday morning when we gathered to pray, I told them, I said, I think that Elk Ridge is going to do well during this tough time, maybe even better than other churches because we're a very strong family, and we're committed to each other. And so I would say, even as I begin a message on how God's going to take care of us, I want to begin by saying, if you need anything, you contact somebody in the pastoral staff or one of the elders, and you let us know what we can do. But we're going to stay in close contact with you over the time ahead of us. It may be a shorter time. It may be a longer time. We don't know. It's pretty unusual times. But let's do what we're committed to doing every Sunday morning, that is praying before we open up God's Word and then work through it carefully. Let's do that. Let's pray. Father, we are in need of you. No different from any day, although these days are pretty unique. And I ask, Lord, that you'll help us to learn more about who you are. Teach us, change us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, we're gonna take a little bit of break from what we've been normally studying. We've been looking at a series on Jesus' teaching and activities by the lake, the Sea of Galilee, in the series that I've been calling Jesus by the Lake. But I think over the next few weeks, we're just going to take a break from that. We're going to go to the Psalms. I have found the Psalms to be a tremendous encouragement to me over the years. And I want to just stop, slow down, and enjoy four or five, six key Psalms that I'm going to call this series, this online series over the next few weeks. I'm going to call it the Psalms Under the Stars. I've picked some Psalms that talk about the beauty of creation. We're all cooped up in our homes. The social distancing is real. And I want to just point out the grandeur, really just go to what the psalmist are saying about the beauty of creation and how God is amazing and strong and powerful and just enjoy him in these psalms. And we're going to begin this morning with arguably the most well-known psalm that there is, Psalm 23. And it's going to talk about sheep. Someone once told me a long time ago, if you want to understand Psalm 23, you've got to think like a sheep. So we're going to try that. Now, I didn't grow up around animals. We had a few pets when I was young. We had Boots the cat and Blackbeard the cat. And we had three turtles, Mama and Slowpoke and Pedro. We had a dog for a little bit. And I even think we had a bird for a short period of time. But I, we don't even have a pet now. And I didn't grow, on a, grow up on a farm or a ranch around animals. But we're going to look at 
animal life. And we're really the highlight of this psalm. We're the sheep in this psalm. The Bible doesn't refer to the Lord as a cowboy, doesn't refer to him as a dog trainer, it refers to the Lord as a shepherd. And I think there's a reason for that, because we are a lot like sheep. We're fairly vulnerable as sheep are. We may be, as again, someone once told me about sheep long ago, that they tend to be a bit slow. They're not always the most intelligent animals out there, and we get like that. We think that we have everything together, but we're not as smart as we think we are. We certainly need someone to care for us, and the Bible says the Lord is our shepherd. So I want to look at Psalm 23. The first thing I want to do is maybe a little unusual. I know you've got your Bibles open to Psalm 23, hopefully by now. If not, you can make your way there. But when you get there, I'm going to read it to you. But I'm going to suggest that as I read, you just close your eyes and just picture yourself outside with a good shepherd. And then it will also transfer an image to being inside a home with a gracious host. But let's just quietly and calmly and really with a sense of reverence and awe at the grandeur of the creation that God carries us through, the life callings that God gives us. He's always with us. He's our shepherd and our gracious host. Let's just close our eyes and I'm going to read it to you. Maybe you'll hear it different for the first time. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay. Well, you can open your eyes, and then I want to walk through it again with you a little bit and point out a few things as we go. And then I want to give you five reminders, basic reminders of how God will take care of you, how he's taken care of us, has faithfully for years. He's not going to let us down in a time like this. So back to Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd. He's your shepherd. He's my shepherd. He's our shepherd. And it says here in verse 1, we're not going to lack anything. And the shells maybe are a little bare at the stores, and maybe your shelves at home are a little bare, but we're not going to lack anything because as a church family, and God uses the church family as his provision, his way of taking care of us, he's going to provide for what we need. He makes me to lie down, it tells us, in green pastures. And when it says he makes me to lie down, it is a Hebrew tense that literally means that he's going to make you lie down. You maybe aren't willing to do that sometimes on your own. You're not willing to rest on your own. You're not willing to stop, but he's going to stop us and slow us down. And maybe that's a part of what this time is for us. We're going to see what matters. And we're going to slow down and maybe draw into our immediate family or to our church family in a different way. But he causes us, he makes us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside the still waters, says the old KJV and the New King James Version from which I'm reading. He leads me besides the calm waters, we could say it, or the quiet waters. He restores my soul. So you'll see now he's changing from a, a physical imagery to a spiritual, internal, emotional need. He restores my soul, or you could translate that he restores my life. 
And we need a little restoration of life right now, I think. It says he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. He leads us. He's our guide. It's a word that shows that he's going to take us to a place of refreshment, to the paths of righteousness that lead to a place where he can show us that we're safe. The paths of righteousness are the right paths. He's going to take us the right places. And for him, in his plan for us, this is the path that he's called us to. And it's the right path. It's the safe path for us, even if it feels a little scary. And we'll come back to that. But he does it for his name's sake, for his reputation. Verse 4. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, this is a psalm written by David. You can see that. It says a psalm of David. And David lived on the mountaintop of Bethlehem, and it was an up and down area, highs and lows. And they're always trying to find new places in the valley for the sheep, but it's kind of dangerous and dark sometimes in the valleys. It says here that we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the death darkness, the deep darkness. You get down in the valley and the sun can't penetrate and it's harder and it's darker, but I'll fear no evil. I've had so many of you say to me over the last few days, I'm not afraid, Brother Daniel. I'm not afraid. And that's good because that's exactly where the Lord wants us to be. He doesn't want us to be afraid because we have each other and we have him. It says, for you're with me. That's right. The shepherd is with us, and he has his rod, his staff, and they comfort me. They console us. They protect us. And then watch the change here in verse 5. It's changing to a gracious host. You prepare a table, or you set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And then you anoint my head with oil. It was a gracious host who would care for those who came into his home, providing for all that they needed and giving them the cool oil for a, a scalp that had been under the sun all day. And he used his staple, oil. He gave it away to share it with others who needed it. So you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. I have everything I need is the idea. And then verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me or shall pursue me all the days of my life. The Lord is always pursuing us with his goodness and his mercy. And then David says, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A few things I want to emphasize just as a reminder. Five ways that God takes care of us. He provides for our physical needs. The shepherd is providing for David's needs. He's going to provide for our needs. He gives us green pastures. I thought of the verse, pretty appropriate. I thought of the verse in Matthew 6, 11 that says, Give us this day our daily bread. The Lord is teaching the disciples to pray for daily bread. Yeah. You go to the stores, you go to Walmart or H-E-B, or you try to drive up to the Metroplex or to Granbury to find bread. Kind of hard to find. But the Lord says, I got gotcha. you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to provide all that you need, even your daily bread. Maybe not. The specific kind of bread you might like, or maybe not even bread itself. Maybe you'll have to settle for hot dog buns like we did the other day and make sandwiches from that. But he's going to provide for your bread what you need, your staples. Philippians 4.19 says something along the same line. My God shall supply all your needs. Everything that you need, he will supply for you. Not everything you want, that's not always the case, but everything that we need. So he's going to provide for our food we see here from the psalm. The shepherd provides David with clean water. He brings them by the still waters where they could drink it. It's clean. It's not scary. It's not rushing. 
he brought them to a place probably where there's no parasites in the water, no disease, where they could rest and relax by the quiet streams without fear of falling in and and being harmed and where he could take some of the water and care for their dirty wool or to heal their wounds and just recover from the journey that they've been on. But God provides for their physical needs. Secondly, our shepherd meets the needs of our soul. We see that in the words that uh, David says, he restores my soul. Sheep have a tough life. They sometimes fight against one another. It's not easy to make the journeys that the shepherd sometimes calls them to do. He's got a purpose for these journeys. He's trying to get them to the calm waters and trying to get them to the green pastures and trying to find what they need for their everyday needs. And we can trust that God's going to provide for our soul, for our life. You're tired. All the change is wearing you out. He's going to provide for you. That's the confidence that we have. You may not be able to find the toilet paper. You might not be able to find the, the rice and the beans or the bread. But I know something. Your church family probably has what you need. We're willing to share. There are 90 rolls of toilet paper or so that we ordered a while back. We weren't even sure why we ordered so many rolls of toilet paper, but now we know. And so I have some extra toilet paper, and Miguel's got some, and the staff has access to some as well. If you need some toilet paper, we've got it. We've got some hand sanitizer. We've got whatever. We'll share what we have, and God will provide for our food. He'll provide for our water. He'll provide for all our physical needs. I don't have any doubt about that. So thirdly, God leads us and keeps us safe, and he's going to. It tells us he leads us in the, in the right paths, in the paths of righteousness. And he does it because he's a good shepherd, and his reputation is certainly on the line. He's been a shepherd a long time. He knows what we need. He knows where to go. He knows what paths are right for us. He knows what's best to grow us and change us. And, uh, and generally, he picks the paths that aren't slippery, that aren't hard for us. He wants to make sure that he cares for us in the best ways, but sometimes there are paths that will take us by dangers. But he's even there. He's with us. And he's with us now. But he does it for his reputation, ultimately. He loves us, yes, and he, he wants others to see how much he loves us and how he's going to take care of us. And those looking on Elkridge, those looking on you, will see how God's going to use your church family to take care of you. That's part of his provision for you. But he does it because of who he is. And then fourthly, he's with us when we're afraid. Again, I haven't heard anybody say that they're afraid. But if you are, I think it's probably fairly normal. But let's make sure that our new normal is just a calmness, a peacefulness, that the God of peace is providing for us. And even though we can feel very defenseless, I mean, how do you how do you fight a virus? You do what you can, but it's an unseen enemy. And we have unseen enemies everywhere. We've got the devil, and we've got now this new virus, and there's enemies from within, even our own nature that surprises us. But God's going to give us the provision, His Word and His Holy Spirit, and one another to hold each other accountable that we might be able to get through these hard times. But he's going to be with us when we're afraid. And sheep are easily frightened. I think I've learned, you know, things can make them jump pretty quickly. A rabbit scurries out of a bush. Or there are real dangers, wolves and cougars and coyotes uh, creeping around the flock. But a shepherd has a rod and a staff to fight them off and to protect them. Sheep don't have any real claws of their own or teeth to defend themselves. That's why the imagery, I think, is so beautiful. But God takes care of us, and he's never going to leave us or forsake us. We know that from Hebrews 13, 5. So no one can hurt us. Nothing can happen to us. As I've said all my life, we are invincible in God's care. God can take me home when he wants. He's in charge of that. But no enemy can affect me. No enemy can defeat me or discourage me unless I let them, and certainly no enemy can harm me ultimately 
unless God allows. And sometimes he takes us home. And he can come and get me, and I'm ready for him. But I don't have any fears of that right now. I am just confident that God is in control, and he's providing for us. Fifthly, I would just say, if we stay close to the shepherd, we'll see and sense his goodness and his mercy. That's the pro promise here, is that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. God will take care of you. That's the message. God will take care of you. If you're doubting that, please let Psalm 23 speak into your life this morning. God will take care of you. If you want to do something following this message, and I am encouraging you to spend some time in prayer or to consider these things that I've mentioned that I see in Psalm 23, you can do some other things. You can go back and read Psalm, excuse me, 1 Samuel 22, which I think may be the background to this message, this psalm that David wrote. Very possible that he wrote this when he was fleeing from King Saul, who wanted to kill him. His life was in danger, and and he just trusted that God was going to provide for him, and God did. Or you could memorize Psalm 23 if you haven't already, or pick up the wonderful book by Philip Keller, A Child's Look at the 23rd Psalm, or just begin reading through the Bible again. Start with Psalm 1, or work your way through from the very beginning. Just but spend time with the Lord and you'll find that He will be your comfort. God will take care of you. As I close here in prayer, again, I just invite you to spend time as a family. Maybe each member of your family or the friends that are with you can pray and you can share again how this psalm has encouraged you. Let's be that encouragement to one another. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the confidence that we have that you provide for our physical needs, the needs of our soul, that you lead us and guide us. We don't have to be afraid and that you're going to pursue us with your goodness and mercy as we seek to stay close to you and to the degree that we do, we'll sense it. Give us that calm that David sure seems to have as a sheep, even amidst the dangers, knowing that you are a good shepherd, John 10. You are a great shepherd, Hebrews 13, I think it is, and a chief shepherd in 1 Peter 5. You've got us. We are in your care. In Jesus' name, amen.